it's gnocchi time. So as we said in Italy, giovedì gnocchi. Thursday is the day for gnocchi. Very random, but we say that. Now, one first thing that is important to know is that gnocchi is not one recipe. It's a family of recipes. You can make gnocchi out of many different things. You can have gnocchi di zucca, gnocchi di patate, which is the classic one with potatoes, the one with butternut squash, with courgette. And um, remember that when you make the gnocchi, you try to put as little flour as possible. So you don't want them to be al dente as you would with normal pasta, but you want them to be soft as a cloud in your mouth melting. And that's why it's very good if you use roasted potatoes because the one with the red peel uh, uh, because they are flowery so you can actually use less flour to make your gnocchi so we have the potatoes now we put only one egg okay just to bind everything together okay and then all the flour that has been measured is 250 grams of flour and it's better actually if the potatoes are cold, otherwise you won't be able to work with it. You can put a little bit of pepper and a little bit of salt. You can put as much as you want, but not too much, because in any case you are going to, to put um, salt and pepper also on top of them. And then a little bit of... Uh, in this case I'm putting parsley, but you can also put other herbs if you like. And then, as we said before about the pasta, what we can do is like we just crush everything together like this. It's better not to overwork it because when we do so, it ends up to be too sticky. So we keep on working it and always, uh, as much as you can, try to reach for the flour because uh, it's less sticky, so it's easier for you to handle the dough. At the beginning, uh, we have to squeeze the ingredients together, but as soon as possible, we are going to knead this by compacting it. So already at this stage, I can see that it's all coming together nicely. It's wonderful. And then what we do is simply punching it into one ball of dough. But can you see, once it's all together, that's all you want. Put it all together as a big bowl and we are ready to rock this dough. Basically what we want to do is to make little bowls that we are going to shape in the traditional shape of the gnocchi pasta. It's actually a nice activity to do as a family so you can have few people making little bowls. I often suggest to leave one bowl as a reference. You will be surprised how the shape of the gnocchi becomes increasingly bigger once you get tired. So all the others that you do, you can compare to this one for sides. Take that you like the combination of three ingredients, uh, butternut squash, maybe blue cheese, uh, uh, pancetta, walnuts, let's say, you know, like uh, gnocchi is a nice way because you don't have to make a pasta where you have all these ingredients. You can make a butternut squash uh, with uh, gnocchi, then use the, um, uh, the blue cheese, you know, like uh, to melt it and uh, with the bacon to make the sauce and then you finish it off with the walnuts. You know what I mean? Like, so uh, it's kind of... Now we are going to do the, the gnocchi to shape them. Remember that with the gnocchi we want two things. This is sort of a bowl of, of potato that you can even use as it is. In that case I will probably go for a smaller size. But to shape them as the traditional gnocchi, what you do is like you use a gnocchi liner. Don't worry if you don't have one, you can still use any sort of rough surface, even a fork. And we are going to show you how. And what you do is like you push this ball against it so that you have the carvings outside, but also it becomes kind of a curl of pasta. So it's less of a bite in your mouth because there is more sauce on both sides. So what you do is like you just punch it, let it roll. And this is your first gnocco. You see, I don't go all the way through. I stop and I finish it off. So, and can you see that there is a hole inside? So they're actually lighter to it rather than having a bowl of pasta. So if you don't have the um, 
Riga gnocchi, gnocchi liner. Okay, so okay, we pretend know. we don't have it. By the way, they are very easy to find. Um, you can actually use even just a simple fork or any sort of rough surface. In that case, what you do is like you push it against it and then you finish it off. It's not quite the same, but it's close enough, you know, like kind of thing. You still have the carvings. Now, we are a little bit uh, more rustic there, but we don't mind it, you know, like... But there is a, even a, an easier way to do it if you're really very lazy. Like me. Oh, like most of the restaurants, <laughs> to be honest. We can take a piece of the dough and then you start to roll it like this. And then uh, I show you. Mm -hmm. So the way you do it is like you basically cut it like this. It's not too bad. And to be honest with you, most of the restaurants, when they talk about uh, fresh gnocchi, they talk about more something like this rather than like this, because, uh, you know, it will be too much work to prepare um, the, the, the carved one. As you might have noticed, we are going to do pesto. Now remember, pesto is a type of sauce, it's not just one single sauce. And we are going to do the classic one from Genoa, Genova, using a mortaio e pestello, mortar and pestle. And that's where the sauce gets its name. In fact, you put the ingredients and you beat them in, and that's pestare. So that's why what you get out of it is a pesto. Let's get started. First of all, you put a little bit of garlic. Uh, it's nice to go by adding uh, the ingredients uh, so that uh, you, according to the flavor of the garlic and the pine nuts, uh, you can also toast the pine nuts if you like. You can decide which one to put, uh, like if you want uh, more garlic or more of the other ingredients. So what we do is like we basically throw all the ingredients in and then obviously the basil, we start beating. It's good if while beating the ingredients all together, you keep on adding the olive oil. Don't try to get to the final creamy texture of the pesto just by adding the olive oil, because that will make it quite greasy. It's actually nice if you then add a little bit of the um, boiling water so that it's gonna be creamy as you like it, but less greasy. And you keep on beating it like that. First I try to bring it all together and then I will add a little bit of oil. One thing that is important to remember is that once you get the idea clear on how to make the, the pesto, then you can actually make your own pesto by using different types of ingredients. For instance, you can replace the um, pine nuts with other nuts. You can replace, for instance, the cheese, which in this case is a Parmesan cheese, with other cheese. And the same goes with the basil. In fact, you can make a pesto out of rocket, you can make a pesto out of wild garlic. And uh, it's a good idea to start off from the ingredients. So if you find an herb that you like, you can make a pesto sauce out of it, then put it in a jar, cover it with um, uh, uh, olive oil so it doesn't go bad, and then you can use it to dress your pasta, but also um, as, a, as a dressing for your mashed potatoes or just on a bruschetta. We keep on adding a little bit of basil now, and we are ready to add the olive oil. The reason why it's good to to use a pesto and mortal is because you kind of beat all the flavors out and also it's gonna be a little bit crunchy which means that you will have a bit of the texture of the different ingredient. Now, quite often, even in Italy, people, you will use a liquidizer to make the pesto, which is quite nice because you have a velvety, smooth uh, texture to it. So my uh, advice is to make a mix of the two of them, the one that you have in the mortar and pestle and the one that you actually make by liquidizing all the ingredients together. As I was saying, you know, like it's actually nicer if it's denser like this and then we got to the final creamy texture by adding the starchy water 
of the pasta, in this case of the gnocchi, we just add a little bit of salt and it's done. So, pesto is ready and we're going to cook the gnocchi. All you have to do is, uh, as you do with pasta, you have uh, the salty boiling water. As soon as it boils, you can throw the gnocchi in and when they're ready, they will just float. Now, obviously, you kind of lose heat when you put the gnocchi, so you wait for the heat to come back. You don't move them too much, so we... Can you see how they are floating now? So as soon as they start to float, that means that they are ready. And we can just take like this. It's much better to take them this way rather than draining them in the sink because this way they don't crash on each other because they are still kind of fluffy. So as we say that this is quite a, of a paste and to make it creamier all we have to do is to take the starchy water from the pasta. It's the one basically with the foam in so that the starch will actually make it creamier again. Then we work it together again and we are ready to dress our gnocchi. So, here we have our pesto, we are going to put it in a big bowl. All we do is we toss the gnocchi in it. And we'll see if we want to add a little bit more of the water of the pasta to make it even creamier. Mmm, I can smell the basil. Can you smell the basil, Mandy? Oh, I can smell the basil. <laughs> Very good. So just one second. I'm going to get a little bit more of the water. I think that should be okay. What do you think? Looks good. Looks fantastic. We don't do good. <laughs> it's smashing. Fantastic. And then we can finish it off with a little bit of parmesan on top. Our wonderful pine nuts. The nice thing about putting the ingredients like this, it's almost like a way of reading the recipe, as in, so if you don't know what's in your pesto, this is a memento of the fact that there is, there is cheese, pine nuts, and obviously basilico. Buon appetito!